I'm joined tonight by Galen Rupp, bronze and silver medalist in the Olympics and winner of the most recent U.S. Olympic team trials marathon. Galen, thanks for coming on. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. In the middle of this pan pandemic, what are we, like week 10 now, if anybody's counting? How are you holding up? Any, any, uh, any major life changes for you? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm doing well. You know, I think it's, uh, it's just about rolling with the punches. You know, that's what I've always said from the beginning. And uh, just been really enjoying a lot of time at home, you know, with my wife and kids. Uh, even when I'm here, you know, when, when you're training full on, you know, it's, it's such a full-time gig, you know, going between, you know, running, lifting, stretching, treatment, all that stuff. So uh, it's been nice to just be at home and, and have a lot of time with them. And, and we've really just been trying to, to cherish that time. You know, we've got a uh, Got four little ones that are five and under, so uh, it's busy. You know, our days certainly aren't boring. They're going by quick. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I'm just getting in the, the training that I can right now and, um, yeah, making the best of it. But I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the time when uh, we can all get back to, you know, a little bit more of a, a normal routine. <laughs> As a parent to, to little ones my, myself, any tips for working full-time like you are and trying to, I've got two, four, I can't even imagine it. Any tips to working full-time and parenting full-time? Uh, I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge for sure. You know, um, my wife does an unbelievable job with them and, and, you know, we've just been trying to, you know, do as much, you know, school stuff, learning things in the morning. And, and I think just trying to keep them on somewhat of a schedule, you know, not getting too far away from, uh, you know, their, their normal routine. It, it certainly happens every once in a while, but um, yeah, the more you can just kind of, keep them on somewhat of a schedule and, you know, have some fun stuff for them to do. But uh, I think we're lucky, you know, we're, they're at a really fun age right now. And it's, uh, it's almost easy, you know, they, they enjoy the time at home and, you know, we can go on walks or scooter rides around the neighborhood and playing in the backyard. So, uh, so yeah, we just try to find, find stuff for them to do throughout the day. How has, how has this situation changed your training? Because there's no, no racing in sight uh, at this point. Are you, are you still training at the same intensity, same level that, that you were leading up to the trials? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been getting in some great workouts. Um, we've we've kind of looked at this time because it's, yeah, there's so much uncertainty. You know, I'm hopeful and optimistic that there are going to be some fall marathons. But uh, even then, you know, I, I, I just don't know. So uh, we've been trying to take this extra time that we have now and, and really work on some things that maybe would have been more difficult to do um, had I been in like a full on marathon buildup, you know, getting ready for the Olympics in the summer. So uh, um, yeah, we've been doing a little bit more speed work. I'm not necessarily doing the, the same volume um, that I have before, but, but that's intentional because there, there is just so much time, you know, and, and I think that, you know, it, it's a balancing act. You don't want to do so little that you're, you end up not being in shape when it comes time to, to really make that big push, you know, before a, a marathon. But um, you also don't want to overdo it where you're fried by the time that time comes. So, uh, you know, we've been, we've been keeping my mileage a little lower and, and really working on a lot of speed work and drills and, and stuff with my mechanics because, uh, you know, I, I still have some room for, for growth there, uh, especially after that surgery. So, um, yeah, just trying to take advantage of that and, and make do with what I have. You know, I'm, I'm really anxious to get back in the gym. I think that's the, that's been the biggest thing that I've missed, you know, is not being able to go in and, and lift and, you know, I've got some stuff here, but we've had to get a little creative with the workouts, but, um, you know, with running, I've, I've never minded running on a treadmill. So I do that a lot. Um, you know, I've been going outside a little more recently. Um, but, uh, yeah, just trying to keep my distance, you know, I'm doing everything by myself. Um, but it, it hasn't been too bad. The news of the Olympics being postponed, what was your initial reaction to that? I'm sure there was some disappointment. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, it, it wasn't totally unexpected. You know, I think that it, uh, you know, even around the trials, you were hearing stories about the coronavirus and, and all that. And, and it, it never really hit, I think, until it started to come over and, and you certainly started to see people here get it a lot. And um, so it was, you know, when at the time they made the announcement, I think it was pretty expected that, you know, there weren't going to be sports just in general, we're going to have to take a pause. And um, it was, it was the right call. You know, I think 100%, you've got to put people's health and safety, you know, above everything else. So, um, you know, of course I would have loved to be able to compete this summer. And um, I guess there was maybe a little disappointment, but uh, again, just a really optimistic that it's going to happen next year. And um, you know, those things are so far out of, out of our control you know I think uh, all of us you know Jake and Abdi after the race we were all asked about that and um, everybody kind of said the same you know it's it's out of our hands and uh, it's an unfortunate situation but 
you know, it's, it's important, I think, to keep that perspective that people are going through a lot harder times than having to miss out on a sporting event. Um, and, uh, and we got to keep that in mind, you know, anytime you start to kind of feel poor me, um, there's a, there's a lot more important things and, and people's health and safety and, and well-being certainly tops that list. How does that change, change your, your plans? Because I, I imagine you weren't going to do a marathon in between the trials and the Olympics, but now I imagine that's, that's on the table of fall or spring marathon. If we have fall or spring marathons. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's still a, a little uncertainty, you know, I, I think with whether, uh, just what's going to happen, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it, nobody knows. I think that's the, <laughs> the, the biggest thing is it, it's just impossible to plan for, but, uh, you know, it just kind of, again, you, you roll with it and, and make the best of it. And we've got, you know, plans, whether that means a fall marathon, you know, again, I would love to run one. Uh, I think that I'd be all in, you know, if there was some that were available to run. Um, but, you know, right now we're just kind of focusing on things that we can do in training. And then, um, you know, when that time comes that you could put an event on the calendar, um, there's still a ton of time, you know, to get ready for it. So, uh, once that comes, then we'll adjust things and, and get back into kind of more of a marathon specific buildup. So I want to go back to the last big thing that happened. It feels like before this all shut down and that was the trials and we're going to, we're going to post this on the three month anniversary of the trials. I guess the first question is you talk about getting back into training. How long did it take you to recover from that race? Um, you know, I actually felt pretty good coming off of it. Uh, it was one of the, the better, the better, better times that I've felt, or I guess best I've felt coming off a marathon is the right way to say it, uh, which was surprising, you know, because the course was so challenging and, uh, you know, just with all the uphills and downhills and, you know, it was something that we certainly got ready for, but uh, yeah, I just feel so thankful that we were able to, to get that race in, you know, looking back, it was like, man, if this had been a week later, you know, maybe we wouldn't have been able to have it, but uh it was awesome. You know, I just, I had such a great time there in Atlanta, you know, and uh, I really enjoyed, you know, the challenging course. I think, uh, you know, sometimes I, I do love running on the flat for sure. Um, there's something to just those real raw, fast races. Um, but I also love a challenge and I, I love, you know, those undulating courses that throw a little curveball at you. And, and you didn't come and, and try out the course beforehand. You know, I'm sure you'd heard a lot about it, read a lot about it. Was it, did it live up to the hype? Was it harder? Was it easier than you thought? What, what was, your, what was your reaction to the course? Yeah, you know, I didn't go out beforehand, but, uh, you know, Mike and I, we, we certainly, you know, were aware of the, the elevation changes. And um, I know that you guys did a great job, I think, of posting all that stuff beforehand. So uh, we certainly used that a lot in the buildup. Um, I did a lot of work on a treadmill and, and we ran a lot of hills, you know, to get ready for it. And, uh, you know, both uphill and downhill and, and grades that were even a little steeper, you know, than, than what it was in Atlanta, because it, it, it is, it's so unique. You can't just train like you would train for any other marathon. You know, I think it's naive to, to throw out the hills or, you know, just say, well, we'll deal with it as it comes. You know, that, that's stuff you got to attack in training. So your body's used to it and ready for it um, when the time comes. So uh, we certainly did a lot on that. Um, and there were a lot of workouts where, uh, you know, the few times where he flew up here and, and during long runs, you know, he, he would throw in different hills and, and I didn't even know, you know, what the, what the duration was going to be, how steep they were going to be, but uh, he did a good job, um, an awesome job of getting me prepared for it. But I'm not going to lie, you know, once I got there and, and I think, I don't, know, I don't know whether it was two days or one day before, but driving the course, it was like, man, this is a little more than even I was thinking in my head, <laughs> you know, when you have it's a little different than when you just are, you know, you see a grade on the treadmill, but when you can actually see them, uh, yeah, I was like, man, this is going to be pretty tough. And, and it's certainly a little bit of a shock, but once I got out there, you know, I, I realized that I, my training was, was great and I was really well prepared for it. And uh, I actually felt, you know, pretty good for the most part of that course. And, um, but it all comes back, you know, to how you prepare and, and your training. And we did a lot of really specific work to get ready for that course. And of course, you throw the wind into it, which I, you can only prepare for that so much. Was that as challenging as the hills, some of those headwinds? That was the worst part, I think, was was the wind. And uh, it seemed like it was never, I don't know if I was just getting tired, but uh, it seemed like it was never really a consistent direction. Like sometimes you'd say you'd get it going on a downhill and be like, all right, well, once I make this 180 turn, it's going to be at my back. And there were still spots where it hit you in the face. But uh, that was that was the hardest part, I thought, you know, because – it's hard, you know, especially, you know, in a marathon, nobody ever feels good, especially in the last couple of miles and, uh, you know, having to go up those hills and sometimes, you know, that, that wind just felt like it stood me straight up. Like I was just almost walking in place. Um, 
But, uh, you know, a lot of that's just, again, built up in your head. And I just tried to tell myself, well, everybody's going to have to be dealing with this win too. And, and they're having to go through the same things that you are. So, you know, no excuses. You just got to keep pushing through and, and fighting all the way to the finish. So for those last couple of miles, you were, you were by yourself. So there was nobody breaking that win for you at, at all. <laughs> yeah. and I, was, I was looking at your splits before, uh, before we, we got on here. And your last, with three to go, you had a 42-second lead over Jake and Abdi. Uh, and you ran 450, 456, 458. You could have easily backed off the throttle and, and still won the race, but but you did. Did you not know how how big of a lead you had, or did you just were you just gunning for that time? It was hard to tell. You know, I've uh, I've gotten a lot of flack in the past. You know, from from my wife and and other people about just looking back and, and doing all that. So uh, you know, I never wanted to. I, I was trying not to look back too much. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd like to think that if I needed to have another gear, I, I still had a little bit left to pick it up at the finish. But uh, yeah, you just. You never know, you know, you see those guys are closing and um, sometimes, you know, with the way the course was, um, especially that the last 180 degree turn, you know, right around when you go under the uh, Olympic rings, you know, you can see them and look like they were running fast. So, you know, you never want to, you know, tell yourself you got it in the bag because that's when sometimes disaster can strike. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to stay focused, you know, keep driving. But, uh, but yeah, I think the last mile, mile and a half, uh, I knew I was able to let up a little bit. I think your last mile was like 5'10". So, I mean, you backed up just, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> but first 11 miles, you were, you were fairly conservative, stayed in the pack as guys like Brian Schrader took it out. And uh, how conservative were you being? Were you, did it take you to the, to the third lap to realize what it was going to take to break these guys on this course? A little bit, yeah. I mean, that was uh, by design, you know, to, to sit back in the pack, um, you know, just not make move any big moves too early. Um, you know, the marathon's a long ways. I think sometimes, uh, some people forget that, you know, and, uh, some, especially with these championship races and it's, it's tough, you know, I, I get it, you know, I'll get real antsy myself and, you know, you feel good. You've been training so hard for this. Normally it's like one of the best buildups you have because it is an Olympic year. And so, you know, when you get to the race and you're feeling great early on, it's, it's a tough to fight that temptation, you know? So, so much about what I go through and in, in training is about really, a you know, visualizing that first part of the race and, and just being totally relaxed and, and totally tucked in um, and just conserving energy because, um, you know, it's marathon's not won the first 13 miles, you know, it's usually won the last five, six, eight, ten 10 miles, somewhere in there. So, uh, you know, it's just about, main, you know, gauging your energy and, and making sure that you've got a lot left for the end because it, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks at some point. And so the more you can have saved up, you know, for when it really gets tough, um, that just comes back and, and plays a huge part in the race. So, you know, Mike told me beforehand, he didn't really want me doing anything until about, I think he said 19 at the earliest. Um, so uh, I got a little antsy, you know, went before that. But, um, you know, once I did uh, close that gap to Brian, um, tried, to, tried to lay off a little bit and, and relax, you know, and, and get back to that plan and, and executing that he had said. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was tough. You know, again, you mentioned the wind was a big part. And to be out there, you know, by yourself, you know, those guys that went on early, they were breaking the wind for a long time and running by themselves. And so, uh, yeah, I just tried to, to bide my time and then, you know, regather myself after I made that first surge. And then, um, yeah, I think it was right around that 19 mile mark uh, when you made that turn and head back up Peachtree going up that big uphill that, uh, that I decided to make my move. And, you know, at that point, um, you know, that was kind of what we had talked about uh, you know, beforehand. And, and it was just about being totally committed, you know, at that point, it's like, you got to make a long drive to the finish and, and just keep going, you know, there's no turning back at this point. So, uh, you, you can't question yourself once you make those moves, it's kind of, you know, you're either in or you're not. And I decided to be all in and, and just keep going. In your build up for this race specifically, are you, are you running with other guys or are you mostly doing solo miles? Um, this one was mostly by myself. Yeah. Um, you know, every once in a while that, uh, you know, jump in a workout, if I saw somebody else that was out at the track or, uh, you know, just going for an easy run, you know, there's a lot of people training out here at Nike, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, I was, uh, I was hundred percent solo. So, uh, yeah, was it, you know, it's a little different. Uh, I, I love training with other people, but, um, I, there's also benefits, I think, to running by yourself. You know, you learn to, to be out, you know, push yourself and, you know, those long, lonely miles, which is really similar to what you go through in a marathon. So right. um, I think mentally, you know, there's some huge benefits to it. And, uh, you know, that was just the way this buildup worked. Yeah, I was thinking of that when I was watching you for the last seven miles, just completely alone, that that had to be beneficial, that, that aspect of your training where you do a lot of really hard solo miles. Yep. Coming into this, this race, you were, you know, the top seed, but it also seemed like 
uh, different than other races, you had a little more of an underdog story coming off a, a, a very serious surgery that, that you alluded to. Chicago didn't didn't go well. There's some other drama, but did that get was that a different mentality for you for you coming in? Did you feel that at all? Uh, you know, a little bit, but at the same time, you know, I think uh, I was just trying to be be rational about it. And uh, you know, Chicago definitely did not go great in uh, in 2019. You know, right before this, but. Uh, I, I think that I knew I just needed a little bit more time. Um, you know, there was a lot of things again coming off of that surgery that uh, it, it, I just needed time to get these, my muscles stronger. You know, they just weren't able to handle that, that volume and that intensity. Um, and so, you know, in a weird way, it almost gave me a lot of confidence that, you know, I was running pretty well um, to the time where my, my leg just gave out on me, but, you know, you have to believe that, Hey, I made it, you know, whatever it was, 20 miles there. I've got to make it six more miles at that pace. And there's a great shot that, that I'm going to be right there and, and have a chance to win and, and make the team. So uh, that was my mentality for a long time. And, uh, you know, Mike did a good job too of, of giving me a lot of workouts that gave me a ton of confidence. You know, I would do, you know, long runs that were much longer than marathon distance. Um, I do a lot of, you know, really hard long runs that were, you know, pretty close at 23, 24, 25 mile range where, you know, it's, it's, he said, it's basically like a race effort, you know, that, that I was doing. And so uh, doing all that and, and seeing that my leg was holding up, you know, that was the biggest confidence booster for me. Um, and then I ran that half marathon in uh, Mesa, Arizona, which was also big. And uh, I'm really glad I did that. You know, Mike was talking a lot about just getting back into the, the feeling of racing, you know, even though it was kind of a smaller, more low key race, uh, just the idea, you know, traveling, staying in a hotel, you know, going through that whole routine because it's uh, it had been a while, you know, since I'd done that. It's not like, you know, on the track, it's nice because you have so many races throughout the year. But when you move to the roads, it's uh, they're a little fewer. So um, I think that was really important, you know, and, and he told me uh, after that half, you know, he's like, yeah, I could tell you a little antsy and a little, you know, just a little more anxious, you know, than, than I think I usually am. And uh, and he could sense that. And um, so I'm really glad, you know, that we did all that. But but I think, you know, looking back, I'm sure he probably had this planned out and just didn't tell me, but uh, he had a really, really well thought out, you know, plan, you know, not only with just the training and the workouts to get me ready for that race, but also, you know, mentally to just get me back and, and make sure that my mind was at, was at ease so that I wasn't thinking about all these things that I was thinking about, you know, leading up to Chicago and, and the year before, you know, just coming off of that surgery. I want to ask a couple of questions about Mike Smith in a second, but first, I, I don't think everybody realizes how serious that surgery was. Some people don't come back for that. You, you couldn't, you could barely walk for a couple of weeks, a couple of months after that. Can you just talk a little bit about how long that recovery was and, and how, and how hard you had to work to come back? Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it was rough, you know, um, I don't think there's any other way to put it. You know, uh, my doctor, Dr. Saxena, you know, he was great and he really upfront with me about all that stuff, you know, before, uh, before I had the operation and, and then, you know, I was in contact with him regularly afterwards because um, he was doing a lot of stuff with my rehab and, you know, when I could, you know, certain mile points of when I could start, you know, running on an alter G or running outside and how much to do. And, um, but yeah, I mean, he, he told me, he's like, Galen, this is going to be a long slog back. And you got to understand that, you know, I don't care how, you know, super human you might think you are, you know, with recovery or, or getting over things like it just takes a long time. And, um, you know, I still up until, gosh, even it probably took about a year and a half where I didn't have pain just walking around, um, you know, and, and where, uh, where I thought that this might just be my new, body. you know, I don't know if, if this is normal or not. Um, obviously, I, I know it was a pretty serious operation. I had a lot of things wrong um, going on in my ankle. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, there were some rough days where it was like, are you just going to be in pain all the time? Or are you going to just have to do this, you know? And, and I kind of come to grips with maybe that was what life was going to be like for me, you know, for, for the rest of my time on this earth. But uh, it has gotten a lot better. You know, it's uh, and, and all the doctors and, and Mike and, and my wife, and family and friends, everybody just said, you know, keep keep going. You know, I got a good friend that, that tore his Achilles completely. And um, he said it took him a couple of years until he was back doing normal uh, activities and, and not having any pain, not thinking about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a. Uh, a lot of rehab, you know, a lot of exercises, a lot of strengthening, stretching. Um, you just try to hit it with everything. But, uh, but yeah, I think just knowing that it was going to hurt, uh, I, I, that was just my mindset. That this is just something you got to get through. You know, obviously with the uh, – when I had the operation, it was about, um, 
a little over a year until the Olympic trials. So uh, I knew I had time, but, uh, but yeah, it, it definitely was, was not easy. You know, um, I always know people say, you know, naviculars and Achilles are two things you don't ever want to play around with. And uh, it was a, it's been a long, long slog and I'm still not back. You know, I would say a hundred percent to where I was beforehand, but you know, pretty close, you know, those last, last few percentile points, I would say are the hardest sometimes. And, and they just, again, they take time, you know, a lot of time of, of rehab and strengthening before your, your body's back to hundred percent where it was before you, you had surgery. How do you stay positive? I mean, that's the, uh, people could, could uh, conceivably say, uh, you know, there could be a lot of what was me there. Could, there could be a whole lot of my career is over. How do you, how do you say, how, how do you keep those thoughts out? Um, I mean, I think just I, I surround myself with great people and, um, you know, I feel really lucky to have just a lot of positive people around me. And, um, you know, once when I was going through uh, just deciding whether to have surgery, which ended up being an easy choice in the end, um, you know, hearing what it was going to be like and it was kind of like, all right, this is reality. You know, it's it's there's no way to sugarcoat it. You know, it is what it is. It's not good or bad. It just that's what happened. And that's the way you're going to have to deal with. And. Um, you know, from that point on, once I decided to, to have the operation, it was really just about focusing on everything that I could do and, and just taking it day by day. You know, it, it sounds really, um, I don't know, maybe cliche or, or simple, but uh, it's just about trying to be better every day and, and really focus on the things that you can do. And so, um, you know, I was trying to do a lot of different stuff with, with stretching and, you know, I got really into you know, more meditation stuff and breathing exercises because those were things that I could still do, you know, on one leg. And, uh, you know, I, I really tried to just enjoy the time at home, you know, enjoy the time off. And uh, and then when it was time to get back to work, you know, and just do as much rehab and, and strengthening exercises as you can. And um, that was really the attitude I took every day. And, um, you know, I, I really believe that a lot of it is a choice, you know, how you choose to look at something and, and how what your outlook is. You know, people might say, well, it's it's hard not to be sad. And, and yeah, it, it can be hard, but you do have that option. You know, you can look at all the, the negative things. You can look at all the bad things, you know, the what ifs, but it doesn't really matter. And, and that's just such wasted energy, you know, looking at all these because it's, that's just not the way it is. That's not reality. And you just have to, to look at, you know, try to look at it objectively and, and focus on the, on the positive things. And, and when you start doing that day after day and, and having that mindset, you know, it starts to just become second nature. And, and then, you know, you really can build. And I was just determined to come out of this, you know, better than I was before. And it's, it's, it's a long process and I'm still going through it. But uh, yeah, I, I think that I still have a lot of really uh, great races to run, still have some, some PRs in me for sure. And, um, you know, I'm just excited now to be running, you know, more or less pain-free uh, every day. And I'm really thankful. You know, I think uh, there is certainly I, I tried not to take it for granted, but I think I did, you know, to some extent, just, just having such great health for so long. And now I look back and I was really thankful that, that I had as much time as I did, you know, before this thing uh, really got bad, you know, something I was born with and, and was bad. And I had doctors in high school telling me, oh, you're, you're going to have to get this thing operated on. And of course, being young and, and immature, I was probably like, oh, whatever, you know, I'll just be able to get through this. What does this guy know? But um yeah, I mean, the people, experts I saw were saying this is a ticking time bomb for a long time, um, just the way, you know, genetically I was. But uh, so I'm just real thankful that, that I had the years I had and um, thankful that I went through it, had a great doctor, you know, great people helping me with my rehab. And uh, I'm getting back pretty close, you know, to, to where I was before. So it's exciting. I, I, I'm sure you had to draw on some of that mentality you just talked about when, when switching to a new coach, first new coach in your entire career, but you're two for two with Mike Smith from Northern Arizona University. It, chemistry is a huge part of this. How did you guys click so quickly? I, I think it's, I don't know, you know, I don't know what the reason was, but, um, you know, I kind of contacted him out of the blue and, you know, we just had a lot of really just initial conversations, you know, before uh, either of us committed to anything. And I just really appreciated his honesty. You know, I think he hopefully appreciated my honesty with everything. And, uh, you know, it just, it, I think, you know, when you have that foundation of trust, um, it, it really helps build a relationship quickly. And, uh, and we had that from day one and, uh, yeah, it's just been really fun, you know, working with him and, and getting a whole new perspective, you know, on, on training philosophies. And, you know, it's, it's not too different than what I was doing before. You know, there's certainly a few workouts that, um, that we do now more regularly with Mike that I wasn't doing before, but, uh, it's been fun, you know, and, and I really appreciate, um, the fact that, 
you know, he's not trying to just replicate what I was doing before. You know, he, he really took a detailed look at it and, and um, you know, kind of said, all right, well, this makes a lot of sense. Or, you know, these were some key benchmark workouts. You know, we're going to keep doing those. But, you know, he was really honest in saying, you know, I think there's some holes and, and things that you could be doing differently. And, um, you know, then, then it was, you know, my choice to just be, hey, yeah, let's do it. You know, and, and that was one of the reasons I was really excited to work with him is just to get a new perspective, you know, um, you know, all growth really comes from, you know, being uncomfortable, doing something different. You know, you need new stimulus for your body to, to grow and adapt. It's like you could do a thousand pushups and, but if you do a thousand pushups every day, eventually it's going to get pretty easy and you got to keep changing it up and doing different things. And so uh, it's been really fun. You know, it's certainly uh, been frustrating at times doing workouts that, you know, I'm not used to and that I struggle with, but um, it's also been really cool to see, you know, how I've grown with his system and, uh, it's just been, been a great fit. You know, it's, it's fun, you know, talking to him and, and just chopping it up and kind of coming up with, you know, different plans for how we're going to attack a race or attack workouts. And uh, I've just really, I'm, I've been, I feel blessed that, you know, he's, he's come into my life and, and we've been able to work together and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to keep, keep going. You know, it's been a, been a good couple months. And I think, again, there's just so much room for growth with, within his system and, and his ideas. And, and I'm really excited about the possibilities. How do you make that choice? Because I'm sure there's no shortage of coaches that want to coach you. And you call this college coach out of the blue and say, hey, will you coach me? What, what, what attracted you to him? I just heard a lot of really good things. You know, uh, frankly, I didn't really know him too well uh, before, you know, before I made the choice to go with him. Um, but, you know, when I had to, to look at, you know, who I was going to work with, um, I really tried to make a, make a good list and, and not leave anybody off. You know, I think that, uh, I've always been pretty proud of the fact that, that I think dunk out outside of the box for a lot of my training. And, um, you know, I really, the more I talked to him, it just became really apparent um, that it was going to be a great fit because he really has, um, you know, he, he trains the mind so much and he's really involved in just a, a very like holistic approach, you know, as an athlete, but certainly has a lot of old school training mentality. And, you know, he, he's not afraid to push and, and make me work hard, which I also really appreciate it. So, uh, it just was a great fit. And um, yeah, you know, Nike did a, did an awesome job helping me out, you know, looking at everybody. And, um, but it just, once I started talking to him and, and the more conversations we, we had, you know, for about a month or a month and a half, it just was, was really apparent that, uh, yeah, we clicked, we had a good connection and um, I thought it was going to be the best choice for me. Speaking of old school, you're pretty old school. I've done uh, a couple of these with folks from the trials on Instagram live. You don't have Instagram. You're not on Twitter. You're not out there doing Instagram live cooking shows every night. Why do you avoid that stuff? Is that just, just not your style? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I guess that's the best way to put it. It's just not me. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've always tried to be a type of person, you know, that really let my performances speak for themselves. You know, I, I take great pride in, in my work ethic and, you know, the way that, uh, you know, I push myself every day. And um, I'm not out someone that's ever tried to be fishing for compliments or, or trying to say, like, look at what I'm doing, look at me. Um, I know that's not what everybody does on those things, but uh, that's just never been my thing, you know. Um, I, I push myself pretty hard on a daily basis, and um, the time that I'm not spend training, you know, I really try to put everything into my family or my friends or the relationships, you know, and, and that's just always been the, the type of person that I am. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't have, you know, these massive social circles or things like that. But, uh, but my, my friends that I do have, you know, I'm really close with. And, you know, I like to think I give everything to those relationships. I give everything to my relationship with my wife and my kids. And, um, you know, I don't want to constantly have my phone on me worrying about what other people are doing or, you know, trying to take pictures or do this to put online. I mean, those are, um, yeah, it's just, those are private things. You know, I, I've always been a little bit of a private person and then, um, you know, my family life is, is something that, that I hold really close to my heart. And, you know, I know my wife feels the same way, but, uh, yeah, if I, if I need to talk to my friends, you know, I'll just text them or call them. <laughs> I don't need to try to go online to try to find them. <laughs> that said, is there anything for the track fans watching right now, the track and field fans that you want them to know about Galen Rupp that they don't know about based on your times and your performances? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, uh, um, I, I was, raised just with with a lot of discipline and, and you know i think that the discipline really gets you a long ways in life you know uh, I, I don't know what the perception is you know i really don't read a whole lot about anything running related um it's just always been about you know 
this kind of journey of, of seeing the athlete that I can become, you know, from day one, that's what it's always been about is about maximizing my own potential and, and doing everything. You know, my, I've dedicated my whole life. Um, everything is built around being, you know, the best athlete that I can be, the best man that I can be, the best husband that I can be. And, um, you know, I, I do like to have a little more fun, I think, than people realize. You know, I think uh, some people will say, oh, you're a lot different than the way that you come off. And uh, but, you know, that's that's for anybody. You know, everybody has their own opinions. Um, I'm not about to judge them for their opinions. Um, they're entitled to those. But, uh, but yeah, I do like to have a good time. But certainly um, I'm a very dedicated, you know, disciplined person. And I believe that discipline and hard work can get you a long ways in life, you know, regardless of what field that's in. But if you give 100 percent, you know, and, and that really takes a lot. And a lot of people say, I'm going to do this. I want to be the best. But there's a lot of sacrifice that, that goes into that. Um, and, and I live a pretty basic life. You know, I think any distance run will tell you, you know, it's, it's really just eat, sleep and train. And, you know, every, when I'm not pushing myself, you know, running or in the weight room, um, stretching, you know, it's, it's all about recovery and, and resting up so I can get, get, get out there and beat myself up again the next time I go out to train. How do you let loose? <laughs> I don't know if I should stay on here, but uh, yeah, I, I love hanging out, you know, with my family, you know, uh, it's just, um, you know, football season is always a big thing for me in the fall. Uh, I love my Oregon Ducks. Um, definitely always try to make it down to a few games a year. Um, you know, my buddies and I will usually get together for a road game. You know, we've done that the last several years. And uh, so I, I really always look forward to football season. Um, you know, basketball is fun too, but yeah, I mean, it, when I'm not, I just love playing around with my kids, you know, doing stuff with them. Um, it's been so cool. And especially as they're getting older, you know, and, and some of them are getting more into sports. It's just been a blast to be out there and, and spending time with them. Just a couple more questions because I know we're, we're, we're short on time. One of the, I think, side effects of, of not being out there a lot, a lot is you, you have a lot of critics. How do you keep that? How do you keep that out of your head? How do you keep that from impacting you? And how do you respond to the people who are just never going to come over to your side or never going to never going to see your side of the story? Yeah, I mean, that's, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. You know, I'm, I'm never going to going to go after someone, you know, I'm who I am, you know, I, I try every day to be the best, like I said, the best man, best husband, best father I can be. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really comfortable, you know, with all of us, you know, I think any single person out there is the only person that really matters is the one looking back at you in the mirror, you know, at the end of the day. And, um, you know, I, I'm really, I'm totally comfortable with who I am. You know, you can love me or hate me. Um, but, people that have never spent any time around me or, or never, you know, spoken to me or just go off of, you know, seeing one interview or whatever. It's like, you know, I, it's just never really mattered to me. You know, um, I don't put any effort or energy into people that, you know, trying to get everybody to like me. I know that's a, it's probably an impossible task, but, you know, just try to focus on those relationships that I can. And, and if those people are telling me that I'm screwing up or that I need to change, then, then certainly, you know, I'll listen to them. But, um, again, somebody that's never met me, you know, it's like a, you know, somebody random on the street yells something at you, you know, you don't think twice about it right after that. So uh, that's kind of always been my approach to that. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big person, you know, believer in positivity and, and focusing on good energy and, and good people around you. And, and that's, that's where I choose to spend my time and focus. You said it yourself, you've got more PRs left, but, but after your competitive days are over, where, where's running fall in your life what what is what is running to you at post competitive days yeah I, I mean I certainly run you know for the rest of my life as long as my body allow me to do it you know I, I love it um I love the training you know almost as certainly love competing but uh, I think especially when you get into marathons and, and really longer distances you you have to love the training because you're out there for so much you know so much time and just so many months at a time it's it's like I said it's truly a full-time job so uh you know, I love that. You know, I like just staying in shape, be healthy. So it's something that I'll certainly do uh, for the rest of my life. You know, I probably won't run every day of the week. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'll, I'll enjoy some time to, to play some other sports and, and do some other things that I might not be able to do now. You know, worried about getting hurt or, uh, you know, injured <laughs> doing something. Um, I've always, you know, loved playing soccer, basketball, baseball, all that. But uh how to kind of put all those things on hold to, to do everything from our running. And, um, you know, so I, I think that it'd be fun to explore that stuff, but I'll certainly, you know, get out there at least three or four days a week when I'm done. Cause it's, uh, it's yeah, something I just love to do. Is the new Hayward field calling your name to come back to the track? <laughs> I, I wouldn't rule it out. That's for sure. I'll say that, you know, I won't commit to anything, but, uh, 
it certainly looked pretty incredible. And uh, yeah, you know, I think that, you know, going back to the track, you know, for, for one more race or two, uh, certainly might be in the cards, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, my focus is still 100% on the marathon, but it will be pretty cool to run in that new stadium. You know, it just looks unbelievable. They did such an amazing job with it. Uh, it's been a while since I've been down there to look at it, but uh, I can't wait to, to see it. You know, it's really close to being done right now. And uh, yeah, who knows? We'll see. You never rule it out. Well, hopefully we can see a race there soon and hopefully we see a road race soon. Hopefully you're on the start line at 100% healthy instead of 99.6% healthy. <laughs> Thanks so much for, uh, for taking the time to talk to, talk to me tonight, Dylan. Appreciate it. Anytime. No, I really appreciate it. It's been fun.